Hey guys, this is Johnny and in this video I'm going to show you a small demo I made for a 3D targeting system. You can find this demo in Godot Asset Library or you can simply download this from the Templates tab when you open Godot. I did make another one like this before which uses Euler angles and is very simple to implement. This one actually rotates around one axis so technically this is only 2D rotation in 3D space. But in this project I used a function called slurp which is very useful when we want to interpolate the 3D orientation of an object. I'm basically interpolating the transform instead of the Euler rotation of the object. Using the Euler angles for interpolation is not a very good idea because it doesn't always give the desired result. You can find out more about this in the official docs and I'm gonna put the link in the description. Here you can see I made a player with an arrow on its head and a third person camera controller. The H node is for a horizontal rotation and the V node is for vertical rotation. They're basically the yaw and pitch of a gimbal system. You can control the player with simple WSD keys with added space key for going up and control key for going downwards. I've made the camera targeting system in the script which basically interpolates the camera orientation towards the target. So when we press F, targeting becomes true and here the slurp function is called for the basis of the H node and the rotation of the V node is slurping towards zero. The slurp function takes the destination variable and the interpolation value which is the targeting value. The interpolation ranges from zero to one where zero means the starting orientation and one means the final. So that's why every time you are toggling the camera targeting, the interpolation becomes zero and gradually goes towards one. This way the basis of the H node changes from itself to the rotated basis. I calculated the rotated basis on this line using the looking at function of the transform. This function returns a new transform with the negative z axis facing the given vector 3 position and I'm taking the basis of that transform. And here if the targeting is disabled, I'm lerping the x and z rotations of the h node towards 0 and the y rotation is controlled by the horizontal mouse movement. You can also see here I've made two different systems for camera targeting. With this one the targeting value is passed as the interpolation value so when it becomes 1, the camera gets locked. But here, instead of the targeting value, I'm using delta multiplied by a value, so the interpolation is non-linear and it feels like the camera is following the target instead of locking. You can see here how it feels when the camera is following instead of locking. And if I turn this on, you can see how the locking looks like. I also created five types of targeting with the arrow. The first one is direct targeting, which is kind of like the look at function but we are getting the positive z-axis facing the target as we are using the looking at function from the target to the self. Here I'm using 1 as the interpolation which means the orientation will instantly change towards the rotated basis. You'll notice I'm also changing the scale to the initial scale which I stored at the beginning because the slope function only works with normalized vectors which resets the scale of an object. The scaling is irrelevant with the camera that's why I didn't use it there. And when the targeting is disabled, the orientation instantly changes to the initial one. You can see how the direct mode looks like. The second one is smooth follow which is non-linear because I'm using delta multiplied by a value for the interpolation. I also use this method for the camera script. So this is how the smooth follow looks like. You can see the arrow never settles as the interpolation never settles at 1. The third one is smooth target which is slightly more complicated than the smooth follow. Here I'm using a little mathematics to fix one issue. You see when we interpolate with a value multiplied by delta, 
We are going from 0 to 1 with the speed defined by that value. Thing is, the difference between the starting and finishing position are not always the same. Yet, we are moving the interpolation from 0 to 1 with the same speed for all the positions. As a result, instead of the same speed from all the positions, we get the same duration. Which means if rotating 10 degrees takes 1 second, rotating 90 degrees will also take 1 second. Here I'm taking the angle between initial forward vector to the final forward vector as the distance. And here I'm defining the velocity as the interpolation value divided by the distance. Keep in mind that this velocity is not the velocity of the object, but is the rate of change of the interpolation value. Meaning if the velocity is higher, we would get from 0 to 1 faster. So if I divide this value with the distance, the velocity will reduce if the distance gets higher. So if the angle is higher, we would get from 0 to 1 more slowly. This would make sure we would get the same speed from all the angles. You can also see I'm ignoring this block completely if the angle is 0. So that we don't get a divide by 0 here, and also it's pointless to look at the target if we are already looking at it. Unlike the smooth follow, I'm actually increasing the look value here which I used for the interpolation value in the slope function. As the look value becomes 1, it means we are locked at the target. So this is what makes the locking mechanism, and this here is the only thing that makes this motion non-linear. As we are updating the target orientation every frame, and recalculating the angular distance from the initial orientation, this distance actually increases over time. So the velocity actually reduces instead of being constant. And we get a smooth non-linear motion with a target mechanism at the end. If we remove these two lines, the goal orientation will not get updated every frame, but only the first time we press the button. This way the distance will be the same and the velocity will be constant. Which is exactly what the constant static method does. This way you'll get a targeting system with linear motion, which is good for mechanical animations used for tanks and turrets. But as the goal orientation only gets calculated when we press the button, the targeting system won't work if the actual target or the player is always moving. It would only work if both of them are static. So if you have a situation where the target and the player both are static, and you want to create a targeting system with linear motion, this simple code will do the job. The final method deals with the linear motion and moving target, but it's a little more complicated than the other ones. To deal with moving targets, I use this angle variable which gets assigned when we press the target button and here whenever the angle between the initial orientation and the goal orientation changes. Meaning this angle gets updated whenever the target moves or the player moves. Otherwise this will work exactly like the previous constant static method. So whenever the player or the target is moving, I'm resetting the angles and the look value. So we are always recalculating everything when we are moving. Also when the target gets locked, we don't need to recalculate anything and we simply just look at the target all the time. So this is how it looks. So that's it for this video, if you'd like to see more cool stuff with Godot, be sure to subscribe and you can also join my Patreon page to support my works. And once again, I'm really grateful to everyone who's supporting. So thank you for watching.